Hi, fellow believers in Christ. Satan is a blackmailer. Um, he will try to emotionally blackmail you to prevent you from from receiving salvation. And there's two ways he does it. One is if you're not a Christian, um, he'll tell you that if you repent from your sins, you will hate your life, meaning you won't have fun anymore. You, you won't have anything to live for because if you give up gambling and drinking and smoking and partying and chasing after money, then um, you won't really have anything good to live for anymore and you, your life will be boring and stale and awful. And so he blackmails many people this way, making them think that their life is going to be really horrible and meaningless and, and that it will be empty and lose all their friends. Now, yeah, when we repent of our sins, we do lose friends, but we lose the kind of friends we really don't need. We'll find better friends later on. The Lord will bring godly people into our lives who will be better friends than we could have ever hoped for. And so you really don't lose anything. And you gain, when you repent of your sins and follow after Jesus Christ, you gain a new life that's full of power and victory. And um, you are free from the bondage of sins. So you realize who you really are um, in Christ and who you were meant to be. And you have freedom. You don't feel like you have to chase after things. You don't, you don't have to chase after entertainment and chase after relationships, chase after money and stuff like that in order to feel good about yourself. You can be comfortable in your own skin finally as a human being. And you're comfortable just meditating on scripture, praying with Jesus, serving him. And you get revived and you get revived when you serve Jesus and you get rewarded to do um, now, I'm um, into prosperity teaching, but there are little rewards that come your way where Jesus will just um, bless you in a certain way because of your service to him. Now, that's not why we're not serving him for rewards, but he's rewarded me before. That's all I can say is I'm just speaking from experience. There's been times where right after... Um, I served Jesus in one way or another, like, for instance, sharing the gospel with somebody on the street or with a neighbor. And then immediately I get a reward. <laughs> and I, I'm not trying to say that, that that's a teaching from scripture. It's just my personal experience. OK, so I'm not trying to say there's any scripture verse that goes with that. But um, it's just been my personal experience that Jesus does bless my life. The more I serve him, the more I get blessed. And um, so it's just been interesting. And he puts a joy in my heart for knowing that I'm pleasing him. There is no greater joy than knowing that you have pleased Jesus. There, there is something so special about that and so precious. Um, it, it replaces any kind of fun you would have had doing anything else. Um, there's been times where I was so happy knowing that I did something that Jesus approved of, like sharing the gospel or witnessing, giving my testimony, praying with somebody, um, and different things like this, where I just felt like Jesus was just hugging me, you know, <laughs> and and saying, you know, um, you know, bless you, my daughter. You know, I, I've had those feelings from Jesus before, and it, it feels so, so good to know that Jesus is pleased with you and that he's and that he considers you his friend and i don't always feel that way with jesus if i'm just be, being selfish and not really serving him and kind of focusing on um think the wrong things i don't really get that feeling but i i feel that way so well so much when i you know share the gospel with somebody or share my testimony with somebody and so you don't lose your life. Yeah, you'll you'll lose the old life, but you won't hate the new life. And that's the part that Satan doesn't doesn't explain. Uh, you will lose the old life, but you'll love it. <laughs> I love it. The fact that I've lost my old life because my old life was very depressing. I I had so many demons and that were um, tormenting me all the time, emotionally and psychologically. There was so much torment and loneliness and bitterness in my life that I can't even describe that I lost. And that's what I lost when I repented of my sins. Uh, because Jesus 
comes in and he cleanses and he makes you whole. And um, he gives you the life that you never had, that you could have never had in relationships or anything entertainment-wise or money. Uh, he gives you He gives you a way better life. And then number two, Satan tries to blackmail Christians as well. He blackmails the Christians and the non-Christians. And what he does with Christians is he says, if you confess your sin openly, you will be judged by other people, who other Christians and other people and maybe even God. Um, God. God will be mad at you if you confess your sin and other people will be mad at you and, and you'll have to pay the piper. And so that's also a blackmail thing to keep people keep Christians from confessing because Christians do need to confess their sins ongoing. You never, when you come born again, you don't go back, you don't go back to the old life of riotous living and all that stuff, but you still have things in your life that have to be dealt with. And the Holy Spirit takes you up to higher and higher levels. And he deals with stuff that we, that as a non-Christian, you wouldn't even really think is a sin, but it is. And after you confess all the obvious sins and you repent of that and you become a Christian, you start walking with Jesus, then the Holy Spirit reveals deeper things that you need to work on, um, deeper levels. Like um, for one thing, after I became born again, um, the Lord revealed to me that I was harboring a spirit of, um, what was it, um, a spirit of sorrow. And as crazy as that sounds, I actually was. <laughs> but I wasn't aware of it until the Lord told me. And he didn't tell me until after I became born again. That was when he told me that I was harboring a spirit of sorrow that was completely unnecessary. And he commanded me to give it up. And so I had to repent of that and give it to him. He, he told me, he actually pointed me to the verse in Isaiah that says that he was a man of sorrows. And he took my sorrows on the cross, and I had no right to keep carrying those and to keep acting like I'm Jesus and like I'm the one on the cross when he already did it. And, and he was showed me that it was actually an act of arrogance to continue on um, harboring and entertaining this spirit of sorrow when he had given me a new life in him. And so I had to confess it and repent, and then he Jesus lifted it off of me. Jesus drove that demon away. And since then, I haven't had to live with that spirit anymore. We all get sad. So I'm not saying that you'll never be sad if you're a Christian, but I actually had a spirit of um, sorrow that I was living with and entertaining, and it was an evil spirit from Satan. So it was one of Satan's demons um, that I was choosing to entertain. So um, but, but I had to confess that sin in order to be um, freed from it, you know? And so when you confess your sins as a Christian, um, two things happen. Number one, um, Jesus drives the demons out and you get cleansing and wholeness and you, oh, you get joy. You get the joy, the joy of Jesus in, in your heart. And then you, you can live a much more whole life and much more, um, just joyful life. It's amazing what happens. And number two, when you confess your sins openly in front of other Christians, it's a witness to them and it shows them that they can do the same thing and receive the same cleansing and wholeness. And that's why I love it to hear people confessing their sins. I love it when Christians confess their sins. And if I was in a room with a Christian confessing their sins, I would have a massive smile on my face. Because I, I know I've already, I've, I've experienced the blessing that comes from that. And I want to see other people experience the same blessing. So it isn't a shameful thing. He, he tries to put shame on us um, as Christians. He tries to use shame as a blackmail against us to get us to not confess. Because he's, he tries to get us to be embarrassed about our sin so that we want to cover it up. And that's the mistake that so many Christians because they're spending all their efforts covering up their sins and hiding their sins and talking about the covering of God over their sins. But what they really need is for Jesus to shed his bright light on their sins and expose their sins so that they can be cleansed, healed, and made whole. And that's where the true blessing comes, not in 
other Christians not knowing what you did, <laughs> but in the whole world knowing what you did and, and knowing that Jesus cleansed you and made you whole because it's a witness to the world and it fills you full of his joy. We, we have to be humble. We have to humble ourselves so that, um, so that Jesus can be magnified and glorified in our lives. And Jesus, it is, it's a beautiful thing when Jesus is glorified in your life, but it won't happen if you're not, if you're not humble and you're not willing to confess your, your mistakes. So Satan wants to rob us of this beautiful, amazing blessing by shaming us Christians into not confessing our sins. And at the same time, he wants to rob the non-Christians of salvation. He, he wants them to spend eternity in hell um, and us as well because of unconfessed and unrepented sin. So, um, so these two things that Satan has made us fill are complete lies. And I just don't want you to believe those lies anymore. I want you to embrace um, your freedom in Jesus Christ. Um, shame comes from Satan. Now, conviction of the Holy Spirit comes from God. If you are regretting your sin and you're sorry for your sin, that's godly sorrow. But if you're ashamed of your sin and you're trying to cover it up, that's satanic. That's demonic. And that's from Satan because he doesn't want you to be saved. He doesn't want you to be whole. He doesn't want you to be healed. And he doesn't want the demons to leave your life. Um, so that's demonic. Um, so, um, but anyway, I hope that ministered to you. And I just ask that the Lord bless your lives, open your eyes and soften your hearts and reveal to you his glory when you can repent and confess your sins. And, um, and, you know, the night that I became born again, I had to confess some sins that were embarrassing you know, stuff that I wouldn't want to ever tell anybody. But I did confess it because the Holy Spirit led me to confess to these Christians that, that were leading me through salvation prayers. Um, the Holy Spirit made it known to me that, that, the, that the more open and honest I was, the more deliverance and restoration I would receive. So, so even though I had to kind of bite my lip a little bit, um, I just went ahead and confessed because I knew the deliverance was coming. And it did. I was miraculously and beautifully delivered on the night that I became born again. And a big huge factor in that was because I humbled myself and confessed everything. <laughs> so, um, of course, you need to do it with the right Christians. These I did it with born again Christians that um, uh, that didn't uh, use it against me. They um, they were humble as well. And they knew that they had also sinned. And so they weren't judging me. They were just leading me into honesty with Jesus Christ so that I could receive full deliverance. And they were in joy for me and with me. And they celebrated with me that deliverance and that salvation. So those are the kind of people who you want to make your confession with, <laughs> of course. But even if you can't find people like that, just confess openly to the Lord and just um you know, lay on your face on the ground if you have to, and just list all your sins openly to Jesus. And the more often we do this, believe me, the more we get blessed. I've also gone to like healing, um, healing services. And every time I go to, I've gone to about three healing services in the last several years. And when I go to a healing service, what I do first before I get there and at the beginning of the service is I confess my sins. And it makes a massive, massive difference when you do that because you're humbling yourself and you're allowing Jesus to cleanse you so that you're prepared for his and you're ready for his blessings and his glory. And it has been really good. I've seen other people that go to healing services and they don't repent. And so when they get there, the pastor says, okay, time to confess. <laughs> and, um, they confess in front of everybody because they because Jesus wants them to confess. If they're not going to do it in private, Jesus says, "Okay, we'll do it. Do it in front of people," because He wants to heal, deliver, cleanse, and forgive. Jesus loves us and He wants to save us. So, but He, but we must be humble and we must confess and repent. So sometimes people have to do it during the service because they didn't do it before the service. 
Um, but we really need to do it on a daily basis. If there's anything we've done or said that isn't right, then we need to we need to confess it and repent with a true repentant heart, not just words, but a true repentant heart. And so anyway, just remember, Satan is a blackmailer. He's a liar. Every thought that, that prevents you from receiving salvation and healing and forgiveness and deliverance is a thought from Satan. So reject it. Rebuke it. And tell Satan he's a liar. You're a liar. I rebuke what you're saying. I, and I... And I will not, um, and I'm going to do what the Bible says to do. I'm going to follow Jesus and I'm going to do what he said. Jesus said, repent and believe. And so Satan, that's what I'm going to do in Jesus name. And then just go ahead and do what, what Jesus is leading you to do. Um, God bless you.